not fear, though the earth gives way. Though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar in foam. Though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her in morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord. How he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. And God of Jacob is our fortress. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Just as I promised to Moses, from the wilderness 
and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river of Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to the fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. And Joshua commanded the officers of the people, Pass through the midst of the camp and command the people, Prepare your provisions, for within three days you are to pass over this Jordan, to go in and take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. And to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, Remember the word that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is providing you a place of rest, and will give you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your livestock shall remain in the land that Moses gave you beyond the Jordan. But all the men of valor among you shall pass over, armed before your brothers, and shall help them. Until the Lord gives rest to your brothers as he has to you. And they also take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving them. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and shall possess it. The land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you beyond the Jordan toward the sunrise. And they answered Joshua, All that you have commanded us we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we obey Moses in all things, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you, as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your commandment and disobeys your words, whatever you command him, shall be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God.
on the gospel armor, each piece put on with prayer. Where duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. <coughs>
glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, it's a joy and honor to be with you, and I bring greetings on behalf of our 125 chaplains serving throughout the world, serving God and country. And it's an honor to be with you because this is a very special and challenging time. You know, our men and women in the military always have to be ready because they can't be getting ready. They have to be ready when the balloon goes up. So they train and train and train some more. They train is how they would fight. Now our military leaders continue to lead in ensuring our personnel are ready for combat. The institution gets them physically and mentally prepared to make a defense for our country, for the hope of freedom. The Navy SEAL motto is the only easy day was yesterday. Maybe that's how you feel in your vocation, in your daily day. The only easy day was yesterday. It's all about preparation and being ready to win our nation's battles. Abraham Lincoln once said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first four hours sharpening the axe. Preparation and being ready are, any, are pretty critical in any planning, but especially in planning a defense. So as we heard in the hymns today and a wonderful job that the kids did in the song, we are talking about the church militant. That's a fancy way of saying we do live in a sin-sick world and we have our enemies, the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh seeking to devour us, to get us away from our Christ. So this evening I ask you a question. Are you ready? Are you ready for the battles and sufferings that you will face every day? What is your plan to sustain you on the battlefield of life? How will you endure when persecution and hatred comes your way because you are a believer in Jesus? What is your hope and confidence as you go into battle and suffering? How will you not drown in the temptations and problems of life. Because we can't kid ourselves. We do live in a sin-sick world, surrounded by evil. It's true in America we may not yet be hauled out of our churches, our homes, or our businesses by evil men who put us on our knees with a gun or a sword to our head and say, renounce Jesus or die. Yet we know that's happening today in other parts of the world. Christians are being executed and martyred simply for their faith in Jesus. Here in our country, people are losing their jobs, their positions, their livelihoods, for giving a defense of the faith and speaking out against issues that go contrary to the Word of God. We're being told to keep religion in the church and out of the public square. Oh yes, they tell you, you have the freedom to worship in your church, your chapel, your home. But don't you dare bring it out into the public square. Hang your personal faith at the door on the way out of your house. Don't bring it here. And how often have we given in and stood by quietly in a discussion in the public square about cultural issues and didn't speak out. We took our eyes off Jesus and began to look around at the winds and rough seas of the world. Did we remain silent because we simply didn't want to be labeled a bigot? or judgmental, or narrow-minded, or a proponent of hate speech, or maybe just didn't want to be canceled. We don't want to suffer for what we believe. We want to be liked and accepted. It's human nature. It's not easy to stand strong in the Lord. Now you may be saying, come on, chaplain. I'm in the middle of a war right now with an illness or a disease, maybe a broken relationship, struggling with guilt, depression, or maybe even addiction. I know what war looks like spiritually as well as physically. And I've tried everything I can to fight to win. Yet the pain continues and I am stricken, smitten, and afflicted. I've tried everything to fight to win. Yet it continues. This is where Paul in our text, which is the epistle lesson that you heard today, 
is that it is not within us. We can't stand and fight alone. We need Jesus. The Holy Spirit calls, gathers, and enlightens us and keeps us in the true faith. We don't stand a chance against our enemy, the devil, without the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because the devil will find a chink in our armor and bring us to despair and hopelessness. Even in physical war, we can give our troops the best equipment and armor that money can buy. We can up armor their vehicles. We can give them the best body armor possible. Yet day after day, we see our troops killed in combat or wounded despite the heavy army armor and despite all their training because a shrapnel or bullet got through their armor. The enemy found chinks in the armor. My friends, the devil does the same to us. He knows the chink in your armor. He knows your weaknesses. He will attack and attack and attack where you are most vulnerable, all to be the ultimate goal of getting you away from your Lord Jesus Christ. He wants you to doubt the Word of God, to doubt the promises of God. He wants you to lose all hope in Jesus and fall into hopelessness and despair. Look around and we see how many examples of his victories. Suicides. Among veterans, we're losing 20 veterans a day to suicide. Murder. Civil unrest. War. The ultimate goal through all that sin and chaos is to get us to be separated from our Lord Jesus forever. Thus, as we turn to our text for this evening, we find God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, has given us his armor for us to fight in this church militant. And remember, this armor is not even yours. It's not your pastor's. It's not your elders. It's not your parents's. It's God's armor given to you. Listen again to these words from the epistle lesson. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of evil. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. Not just parts of it, all of it. Why? So when the devil tries to tell you that you're not good enough to be a child of God, or you're too evil for God to love and die for, that Jesus couldn't have paid for your sins, your guilt, your evilness, you may be able to stand your ground and say, I am saved and I am a redeemed, baptized child of God. Stand strong in the Lord because he gives you his armor. And that first piece of gear that he gives you is the belt of truth. The belt that centers all that battle rattle, all that armor together. And it's wonderful that Paul in our text reminds us that that is truth. And how challenging is that today? Truth. People say there is no truth, right? You have your truth. I have my truth. Pastor has his truth. It's all fluid. There are no absolutes. That's what the world and the devil try to tell us. But not God. God reminds us that Jesus is the way the truth and the life. The God who cannot lie has promised you eternal life. God who cannot lie has promised that he has sent Jesus to live, to suffer, to die, and to rise again for you. God who cannot lie promised that whoever is baptized and believes will be saved. My friends, that's the truth that keeps our armor grounded, keeps us in the assurance that we have the way, the truth, and the life in Jesus. And then the next piece of gear he gives us is the breastplate of righteousness. We know that we are dead in our sins and soiled by evil. All of our good works are filthy rags. The other examples in Scripture is where Paul will use the phrase of robe of righteousness, given to, of Christ's robe of righteousness, given to us, that he imputes and gives it to us. But here, because Paul is talking about warfare, spiritual battle against an enemy who is seeking to destroy us, he uses the analogy of a breastplate of righteousness. The righteousness of Christ given to you, imputed to you by the grace of God for Christ's sake through faith, for you and your baptism. He made you his child. He gives you his righteousness. So he no longer looks at us as the sinful human beings that we are. But he literally looks at us with cross vision. He sees us through the cross where we are saints of God. Righteous in his sight. Not because of what we have done. But because of what Christ has done for us. 
That is a piece of gear that the devil cannot be, break through with all his false accusations. They cannot penetrate the Lord's breastplate of righteousness, which we wear proudly as his children. And the shield of faith. The Holy Spirit created faith in our hearts that clings to the truth of his promises, which clings to his word of forgiveness, hope, life, and healing. Faith that clings to the cross of Christ, which puts out the flaming arrows that the devil shoots at us. The Holy Spirit who is given to us and our baptism and the word of God, which continues to strengthen our faith. That is the faith God tells us that even the faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. Even our faith is God-given that clings to this, clings to these promises of God, despite whatever the devil and the world tell us that you're not good enough or how good you think you are. We have a God who loves us and we cling to him in the cross of Christ. And then the helmet of salvation. I'm sure that many of you growing up probably were like me and we didn't really wear much armor or helmets when we rode bikes or skateboarded or whatever but now I'm pretty sure most of you make sure your kids grandkids have a helmet on in this text that is an important piece of armor in battle the helmet protects the noggin it's their early version of the Kevlar it will protect us against the enemy assaults and I believe in this text this helmet of salvation is simply that we know the end of the story we know that we are saved by the grace of God for Christ's sake through faith. And so when Paul tells us to put on that helmet of salvation, it reminds us that no matter what happens to me this day, I am saved. I am a child of God by the grace of God for Christ's sake through faith. And then he gives us the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God is a two-edged sword that beats back the devil and his lies. Jesus himself used that Word of God as a sword to defeat Satan when he was tempted in the wilderness. And God continues to give us the Word to pierce the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh. As Luther so boldly proclaimed, one little word can fell him. God has given us a piece of armor that is both defensive and offensive in this spiritual warfare we face every day of our life. There will be those who continue to try to get you to doubt the Word of God. Like in Adam and Eve, when the devil said, did God really say? Today we have people saying something as simple as, did God really say that he created you a male or female? Did God really say that a marriage is between one man and one woman? Did God really say that you are going to be saved by the grace of God? You sure there's not something you can do about it? We are grounded in the word of God, which is the truth of God, because we know the word of God is the sword of the spirit. And how precious is that collect of the word that we pray occasionally in our churches and hopefully in your own homes. Hear these words of this great collect. Blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in, our son, in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. A beautiful thing in our personal devotions when we wake up in the morning with our family devotions when we come here to this sacred place every Sunday another special day to hear the Word of God to hear how God in his love sent his son to die for us that Word of God is the sword of the Spirit and finally we have another piece of gear that's often overlooked feet fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace the footwear. Now any foot soldier or grunt marine can tell you it does matter what you have on your feet. Without proper protection it's easy to slow down and lose your ground and not stand firm. The soldiers that Paul is referring to as they talk about this war gear literally had spikes in their sandals to hold the line. When you read this text look at how often it says stand firm, stand strong, hold the line. That's what this gospel of peace is. It helps us on our feet to remind us that we need to go forth to hold the line with the gospel of peace. And what a powerful word that is. Peace. 
How often do we say that word in our divine liturgies every Sunday or in our prayers and we just kind of go over that word? What is peace? Hear these words. This is a peace which passes all understanding, not just human understanding. It is the peace of God knowing that we are forgiven, that we are saved, that we are redeemed children of God. The peace that gives us strength to continue in this veil of tears, in this church militant, this present warfare, because we know the end of the line. We know that we are forgiven children of God and that God who loves us will never leave us nor forsake us. The peace that comes from knowing that all things work out for the good and according to his purpose. The peace that comes that even though we will feel pain, feel sadness, struggle with our own pet sins, pain in our relationships, pain in illness and disease, loneliness in the loss of a loved one. Yet in all that, we stand firm trusting our Lord Jesus, trusting that even as we live in a sin-sick world and all that comes with it, heaven is our home. Our Jesus defeated our enemy and has given us the armor we need to endure until either our end comes or Jesus returns again on that last day. So in the meantime, we put on this gospel of, on our feet and we move out and share that peace of God with our neighbors. And that's what we do in Minister of the Armed Forces, making sure all the men and women who selflessly serve our nation hear about this peace even as they train for war. To remind them that they also are a child of God whom God has sent his son to live, suffer, die, and rise again. We move out to the veterans, to all who have served our nation, who are struggling with post-traumatic stress, who are studying with all kinds of suicidal thoughts, to your own families, to you. Remember this great peace of God which passes understanding the peace that even though we live in a world of turmoil, you know the end of the day, you are a redeemed child of God. So I ask you again, are you ready for war and suffering? Are you ready to face the temptations that will befall you? Are you ready to face the pain that may come your way, the persecutions, the mocking for your standing firm in Christ? Are you ready to stand firm in Christ against all odds? Yes. Yes, yes, you are ready because God has made you ready. He has given you the armor that you need. Amen. And now may this peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand, page 231. Let my prayer rise before you as incense.
pray your grace may always go before us and follow after us, that we may continually be given to all good works. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We pray for the various branches of our military. Lord God Almighty, you formed the land with your word, and from its dust gave life to all mankind. You establish all perimeters and rule over all nations and military. Strengthen the army of the United States, dedicated to defending our land. Give true tactic and selfless resolve, that with prudent fight, our army may uphold peace throughout the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, your word separated the waters. Your hand commands the creatures of the deep. And you call the apostles from the sea to follow you. Bless the Navy of the United States with fortitude to serve not self but country. Give courageous determination to all naval vessels and men to patrol the oceans below and seize ahead by the charted courses of their Creator. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy Spirit, you hovered over the earth and creation and make your abode in the heavens which declare your glory. Uplift the United States Air Force in their high aim of flight, as you have granted man to know the beauty of the air. So steady the wings of our Air Force like the swift wings of the birds, to watch over and protect us from the sky. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Bless, Lord, you establish honor in our country, families, and church. Help our nation to honor the United States Marine Corps and all who bear the sword, that in their willingness to give their lives for others, you would always remain faithful to welcome them in the resurrection as your good and faithful servants. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Savior of the nations, come. You who still the wind and waves with thy word, Protect and guide the Coast Guard of the United States in their mission to rescue those adrift. Make them ever and always ready to set out, that no matter the storm, you use them to seek and find the lost, just as you gather and bring us to your eternal and peaceful shores with rejoicing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for all chaplains, of our military. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you bless your word wherever it is preached in truth and heard by your people. Bless our chaplains, including Chaplain Mueller and all of our Missouri Synod chaplains, that by your gracious word they would call many to saving faith and keep them as the Holy Spirit blesses their work for all those who fight for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
processional, please join us in the parish hall for desserts and Chaplain Mueller's presentation on ministry to the armed forces. We sing our final hymn.